Hello, this is Introduction to Philosophy, and welcome to uh, our first video. So, uh, I'm in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about the sort of overall structure of the course, and then in the rest of this unit, we're going to start uh, talking a little bit about arguments, and in the next unit, we'll actually start getting into some doing some philosophy. So, a little bit about me. My name is Luca Struble. I got my PhD uh, in philosophy from UCLA in 2013, and I've been teaching in, UC in uh, Los Angeles since then, including uh, here at El Camino for the last couple of years. And I'm really excited about this course. I really love teaching philosophy, and I think it's really valuable, and I enjoy it. I hope you enjoy it. I'm really looking forward to it. It's a little bit about me. I'd like to get to know you a little bit, and I'd like you to get to know the other students in this class a little bit, too. One of the things about an online class is that since you're not all in class together, it's not as easy to get to know other students. So, one of the first one of the assignments for our first unit is to post on the introductions discussion board. And there, um, I'd like you just to put up a post that has uh, what your name is, uh, what sort of college experience you have, if any. It's fine if you don't, you don't need any, uh, but if you do, that's great too. And why you're taking the course, your reason, and whatever your reason are is fine. It might be, oh, I'm scrambling to find some units, and that's fine. Or you're excited about philosophy, that's great too. I'm. It's just good to for us all to get to know each other and know where we're coming from. And also, maybe if you can say something uh, that you're about yourself that you're proud of, or something that's unusual, or you know, something just to help us to get to know you. So one thing I might say is that. Uh, this summer, I'm going to be doing a silent meditation retreat, and that'll be about a week, so I basically won't be talking to anybody for a week. So that'll be interesting for me. So, you know, something uh, about you just to help uh, us to learn a little bit about who you are. So what is philosophy? Well, we're it's a trying to answer the big questions. So things like, does God exist? And that'll be actually the first question that we'll be getting into in our first unit and for the next couple of units after that. What should I do? What's the right thing to do? What's the wrong thing to do? What ought I to do? What makes a society overall just? What am I? What kind of thing am I? Uh, what is the relationship, for example, between my body and my mind? And what, in very general terms, can I know? Can I know even that there's an external physical world? Those are the sorts of questions that we'll be getting into. And trying to, in, in, trying to answer those questions to maybe sort of provide some sort of coherent set of answers and uh, answers that that will fit together to provide a big sort of world view and we do so we're trying to reason out these answers so we're not we're not going to be doing experiments this isn't a science class we're not just making up examples or answers it's not uh, an art class where you know you may be asked to uh, make a sculpture or painting or whatever but then you do it, and it's yours, and uh, and you just sort of make it up. And it's not religion in the sense that we're not going to be relying on faith experiences or, or special texts or, or books. So uh, we're going to be using reasoning. And how we do that, well, you'll see. Why might you study philosophy? Well, one thing that's going to be of value to you no matter what, is it, it's going to help you to develop your independent critical thinking skills. When someone presents an argument or, or tries to persuade you of a conclusion, this is going to help you do a better job of evaluating uh, their justification for that conclusion. And it's going to help you, and you can apply those thinking skills, those critical thinking skills to your own thinking as well. And it's going to allow you to better articulate your own thinking and present it persuasively to other people as well on pretty much any topic. But you might also be curious about specific philosophical questions like, does God exist? Uh, and you may want to develop a, a more coherent worldview. And you might think it's fun. In fact, I think it's fun. And I hope that you'll find it enjoyable, too. So those are some reasons to study philosophy. And, and we'll, we'll talk more uh, towards the end of the course about why to, what you might have gotten out of the course. But we'll be jumping into actually doing some philosophy really in the next, uh, in, starting now and and into the next module. So there are a couple of values that I like to sort of uh, think about when doing philosophy. So one is that w we want to learn the truth. We, the truth is a good thing to know, and, and we want it. Um, but in many cases, we don't have it yet. And so uh, w what should our attitude be about that? Well, curiosity, right? We wanna, we're we going to try and find out the truth, knowing that we don't necessarily know it yet. And we also want to have respect. We want to have respect for ourselves, that like we're up for this, that we can actually do this and think about this, that, yeah, like you can do this too. And uh, respect for your fellow classmates, that um, 
you know, they're trying hard too, uh, that they have may have good ideas, you know, maybe they do, maybe they don't, maybe you do, maybe they don't, let's find out, let's do so together. Um, respect for the authors of, that we're going to be reading, because these the texts that we've been reading, that we're going to read, the authors really put a lot of effort into trying to figure out these answers, and, you know, maybe they didn't succeed, but it, they're worth sort of taking seriously. Um, and, you know, a little bit of respect for me, just as one of the other people in this class, and, um, yeah, and uh, generosity, I think, goes with respect. We're going to try to under do the best job we can of sort of thinking that the authors we're reading, you know, have good ideas, and maybe they don't in the end work, but we're not just going to sort of say, oh, this doesn't sound right to me, and dismiss it. Okay, so more sort of logistical stuff about the schedule of the course. So uh, there'll be three modules a week. On a typical week, uh, the first module will be released by Monday at midnight, and then there'll be assignments that will be part of that module, and those will be due Wednesday at midnight. And then the next module will be released by that Wednesday at midnight, and its assignments will be due on uh, Friday at midnight, and then the final module will be released by Friday at midnight, and its assignments will be due the Monday of next, the, the next uh, midnight uh, of the next Monday. Uh, this week, because of the issues with Canvas, we're just going to have two modules, so there's this module and its work will be due on Friday, and then a new module will be up uh, by Friday, actually before then. So what will you be doing? Well, you'll be doing some reading, uh, and you'll, there'll be these videos which you'll need to watch. There'll be quizzes and short assignments in each module as well on the material, and there will typically be online discussions uh, about the material. There are papers, well, there's, so there are going to be three papers. There's an initial reflection paper, a reflection paper at the end of the course, and then one uh, expository paper, sort of critical paper in, in the middle of the course, and there'll be two exams, one halfway through and one at the end of the course. So the course is online, as you know. That means there are no on-campus meetings at all. I will have office hours, uh, video office hours. Those will be Tuesday nights from 8 to 9 using Zoom. Um, and then also, I'm available by appointment otherwise. And by the way, you don't need to be hesitant about emailing me about anything about the course. Please feel free to contact me. Uh, one advantage of online courses is that they're really flexible. You decide when, you can do the work whenever you want, and you get to decide when. And you don't have to go anywhere. You can do it um, wherever you are if you have you know, an internet connection in, in your laptop or whatever. So that's really nice. But that flexibility can be a little bit of can be also actually a little bit of a challenge in a regular face-to-face -face course. You have to go to campus. You know, you go to you go to you go to your classroom. All the other students are there. You talk with them. I, you know, your instructor's there. You can talk to the instructor. Um, with this course, it's like, well, you know, you can with online courses. It's easy to lose touch with the course because they're not these sort of very clear kind of attendance requirements. So. Uh, I'm going to ask you to watch some videos in the next couple modules about some challenges that come about because online courses are, um, you're not just as physically present and don't have that scheduled time provided by the course schedule. One thing that's really useful I would, is I would suggest that you get the Canvas app. There's a Canvas app for phones and tablets, and it makes it very easy to see what the assignments are and when they're due in, in there as opposed to going to the website. And you can even set alarms. You can have that, uh, the apps send you notifications about, you know, coming, uh, assignments coming due. So one thing I really recommend a lot of students in uh, the courses I've taught previously have said they find the Canvas app really helpful for staying on top of what's due. So we have a textbook. It's by uh, Stephen Kahn. It's called The World of Philosophy. You can buy the paperback version of it. You can also purchase the ebook, but you can also rent the ebook, and that's the least expensive to do if you can't find a used copy of it. Uh, and there's a link uh, in the first module to the site where you can purchase or rent it. So you might want to think about renting the ebook version of it. There will also be PDFs on Canvas um, uh, distribute, so not all of our reading is from that text, and there'll be documents on Canvas, so you'll need to pay attention uh, to the modules that they're in some of the modules will contain documents you'll need to download and read and those will be flagged but you'll need to do that okay so uh, how is your course grade going to be determined well do you need to have the right worldview i.e. my worldview no I actually don't care what you believe 
not a whole lot. I'm not too concerned that you agree with me. What I want you to do is to understand the questions that we're talking about and understand the an the questions and the answers and to do a, your best job of reasoning about the questions and the answers. And you can do that without agreeing with me. There's no need for you to agree with me, but it's about how well you're understanding the answers and the, the questions and the different answers to those questions. So I meant, so just to sort of, and, and so your grade is going to be based on points. So the first uh, initial reflection paper is 20 points. There'll be short assignments with each module. Those will come out to around 380 points, but the, that might fluctuate a little bit. You have a final re reflection paper, which will be worth 30 points, one essay, 100 points, and then two exams for each uh, 150 points, which gives you around about 830 points total. So your course grade is determined by the percentage of total points that you get. So a 100% through a 90% is an A. That's standard. But then the B and C ranges are more generous. So a B is an 89% through 75% instead of uh, 80. And a C is a 74% through 60. A D is a 59 through 50%, and an F is less than that. The points column there is a projection based on the idea that we will have 830 points, but you know there may not be exactly 830 points, and so what you want to pay attention to is not your total number of points, but the percentage, um, uh, or not, yeah, not the number of points out of 830, but the number of j just what is your current percentage. That's what your grade is. So how are you going to do well? Well, of course you want to do all the assignments uh, and and so on, but how are you going to do well at those? Well. So here are a couple of tips. Uh, you want to do the reading, uh, which we will we'll be having starting with the next module, at least twice, and do it actively. So that means making notes, uh, underlining, highlighting, and trying to understand the text, not just read it, and do so in a way that involves making some sort of record of what it is that's important about what the main claims in the text are. We'll be talking more how, how to do that. Uh, you may find the text confusing sometimes, and that's why you're going to want to read it twice. You think, oh my god, I have to read it twice. Well, the reading is relatively short, and so you actually, uh, you'll have time to do that. You're not going to have a huge quantity of reading, but it's more difficult, and so you'll want to read it more than once. And that confusion that you might experience is okay. That's because the text is hard. It doesn't mean you can't understand it, though. It means you want to read it more than once and come back to it and see what you think about it. And you'll also want to watch the videos and take notes on the videos. And one thing you can actually do because of the flexibility of the online course is you could watch the videos first, or you could read and then watch the video and then read again, or have them both, you know, you can have the text there and, and turn to the videos. You can really be creative with how you uh, interweave the videos and the reading. You want to review your notes uh, occasionally so that you are sort of reminding yourself of the material and what the different pieces of it are. And you want to ask questions. It's really important to ask questions, when, particularly when there's something you don't understand. And you can ask questions in office hours uh, that I have on Tuesday. is a really good time to do that, 8 to 9. And you can also make an appointment to talk with me at some other time online. Just email me if you want to do that. You can also ask questions on the discussion boards. It's better that you ask them there than that you email me. Why? Well, because then uh, maybe another student might notice it and reply. Or if I reply, then uh, other students will see the reply. So if you email email me with a sort of content question, then I'll probably ask you to post it on the discussion board. That's not because I'm upset with you, it's just that's where I want to answer it so that lots of people can see it. I'm happy for you to email me. Uh, don't worry about sending me too many emails. Just know that sometimes if you send me an email, I'm just going to say, oh, put this on the discussion board. And so it's quicker if you just put it on the discussion board and then I'll see it and reply there. So specifically for this module, what remains to be done? Well, so by Friday, 11.59 p.m., uh, you need to watch the other videos in the module, and you need to do the different assignments in the module. What are those? Well, there's the introduction post in the introduction discussion board that I already mentioned. There's an arguments survey. Please take that before watching the arguments video. You'll get more out of the arguments uh, video if you do that. There's also an arguments quiz. Do not take that before watching the video. That uses that quiz uses terminology that's explained in the video that you won't otherwise understand. So do please only take that after watching the video. You get two attempts at that, but you don't want to waste an attempt um, without when you don't know the, the terminology, so don't do that. 
and then there's a reflection paper, and that's described in the reflection paper assignment, but it's just an opportunity for you to uh, reflect a little bit on what your philosophical views are uh, coming into the course, your views on some philosophical questions, and, um, and to introduce yourself to me a little bit as well. So I should say that if you don't do these and you don't contact me by Friday at 11.59 p.m., you'll be dropped as a no-show. I don't want to do that, but if you're not going to be ta you know, engaged with the course, it's better that you are not in the course. That's It's better for, for both of us. So um, I do want you in the course, and so I hope that you do those, and if you are having trouble with them or if something comes up, you know, some family emergency or whatnot, then do please just let me know, contact me, and that'll be fine. But I need, I need to he either hear from you or have that work done. Um, otherwise, uh, yeah, I'll be dropping you as a no-show. So, um, I know with that said, uh, I hope, uh, I'm really looking forward to, with that said, I'm really looking forward to the course and looking forward to getting to know you. So, uh, let's get to it.